my, my job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. And I will do it by whatever means necessary. Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about healing our intimacy disorders, unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first ourselves and then others. Every episode, we will talk about advice you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow in your self-worth. I'm Sheena Lachey, love addiction coach and trauma specialist. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. So I am very excited to be with you today. I'm jumping right on and I've already I've already recorded this intro a few times. And I think that it's going to be best for me to jump directly into the story that talks about what we're talking about. <laughs> because there's gonna be multiple stories today. Today, I'm going to be talking about the goodness that is currently here, Um, learning how to be present, learning how to stay grounded, learning how to self-parent yourself when things are really good, when you are really happy, um, helping yourself feel that happiness or allowing yourself to feel that happiness. And I'm going to be sharing some of the lessons that I'm currently learning in helping me do that. So... If you are currently in really happy places in your relationships, things are feeling very stable, feeling very secure, and you are wanting to hear how I am learning how to continue to stay present or try to stay present or learn how to stay present in different ways, because I've said this on the podcast before, happiness can be terrifying because happiness for many of us has been the precursor to trauma has been the precursor to the rug being pulled out from under you, has been the precursor to abuse, manipulation, or neglect. So what do you do when that is not what's happening? What do you do when all of your red flags um, and all of your red light sensors are stuck on high alert and there's like they're going off for no reason? And how do you how have I been learning how to turn those off? And what are some lessons that I've been learning? That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. And it's going to be more of a focus on the good. Um, And I'm going to talk about why that's so important in just a moment. But again, I can't start talking about it without talking about it. So if that's something you want to hear about, go ahead and stick around and we're going to jump on in. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Before we get started, let's take a small break to say thank you to this week's sponsors. So many disclaimer before I get too far, uh, today is lawn day. And so I dropped my son off at school and I came in here to record this podcast before the lawn people start and I'm going to talk my quickest, but there may be some buzzing by the end of this episode if I do not beat them. And I want to put the episode out today. So Please forgive me in the meantime if that happens. But what do I mean when I talk about the goodness that is here? So the other day, I was talking with a uh, alumni recovery student turned friend. Shout out to Stacy, uh, and we were just talking about life and just catching up over voice notes and everything. And I had told her I was telling her about like I said, things that are going on. And one of the things is my relationship. And I hadn't, like she knew that I was dating someone, but I hadn't told her, you know, all the details and everything about him and, you know, all of that stuff. And so as I was filling her in, she, you know, we've known each other for years at this point. And also, you know, she, like many of y'all listening to this podcast, you know, she's been, following the podcast for years. And so she's heard all of the really hard work that I put into myself, um, the hard work that I try to help y'all put into yourselves as well. Um, And just seeing a lot of the behind the scenes in addition to what I teach y'all 
and what goes into just my self development and my life and my love. Anyways, she knows she knows a lot of my story, right? And so as I was telling her what is currently happening for me in my life romantically, she got really emotional. And she was like, Sheena, I think that you should share this on the podcast. And I have, in all of my years of teaching and coaching, and even when I was still doing therapy, I have not ever used my relationships, uh, my romantic relationships as a main prop and selling point. Like I don't come... I didn't come every week talking about, well, me and my husband did this or me and my whatever have done this. And, you know, I go on 18 different dates a week. Like I use the methods and and the standards that I teach. I let the words be the transformation and let y'all apply it and see it for yourself. And then I let my students stories and I let what they see and what they experience and I let their transformation be what I use here on the podcast. And every once in a while, of course, you know, I'll like throw in a personal story here or there, but I intentionally don't talk about my personal relationships in detail, what's currently happening in my personal relationships in detail, just to keep that to myself or because I feel like there's so many other things that I could use. (laughs) Maybe there's a part of me that feels like, I don't know if people would really care, you know, but what she really, really impressed into me. um, And as she said, Sheena, so many women are out here dating and struggling. And yes, you teach, and this is going to be a paraphrase, but she's like, yes, you teach this, but it is so encouraging to hear real life stories from people that we know that this stuff works and that it gets better. And to see a black woman be loved um, and being loved so, so deeply, I, I really think that you should share it. And I was like, well, I don't know. And she's like, you know, you could Use it, you know, use it like you always use what you what you talk about, you know, talking about being present and everything. But I really think you should share it. So I I sat on it and I thought about it for a little bit. And I said, OK, I am going to share this. If this is something that would be helpful and encouraging, then I am going to share a little bit of tea with y'all. So <laughs> let's <laughs> we'll go ahead and do this. Two disclaimers before we get into this. One reason that. I have always been cautious too in sharing what's personally going on with me at the time is because I want to be really mindful about spreading some message that says when you have gotten into a relationship, then you've made it like you beat it. You, you beat the game, you beat the level, you can finally rest and you can finally relax because we all know that that's not true. What's hard is to get into a relationship with someone who is worthy But also the part B of that is also staying in relationship with someone who is worthy when you have a whole lot of trauma and you have a whole lot of fear and there's a whole lot of unlearning. And so the growth continues to happen. You know, it's not like you reach this mecca point when you get a ring on your finger or when you walk down an aisle that tells you that you have now somehow surpassed spiritually, emotionally and mentally other people. If anything, that's when the real work begins. And so I never wanted to um, have that as part of an ongoing message that I put out that made people who were single um, and people who do not want to be single because there are people who are happily single and there are people who are single through, through life circumstances and by what's happened to them. I don't want anyone to feel like they are, that I am communicating that there's something wrong or that they're less than because I feel like there's too many, there's enough of that out there. So um, that's another reason why I've always tried to be, try to be cautious. And then the other thing, other reason, the other disclaimer that I'm going to give, I am learning how to let myself be happy. That is what is on my healing board right now. I have learned very well how to be very muted in my emotional expressions for a lot of reasons. 
And what I didn't realize until very recently is that happiness is one of those emotions. So just like I've talked to y'all before about intellectualizing your feelings, I could tell you that I was happy. I could talk about all the blessings and everything, but I would say it in a flat voice. I would say, yeah, so, you know, this thing happened and yeah, it was really nice. And, you know, I got this really nice email from someone, but it would, it would all be in the same um, voice inflection. And I would keep my shoulders and y'all can't see me, but I would keep my shoulders tight and boxed in. And I would make sure I was very mindful of my hand expressions. And I was, you know, even scanning other people's experiences to make sure that I wasn't too flamboyant and too out there. And the reasons why I got to that place we'll go into for a different day. But I learned that it was better to be controlled in all aspects, including my happiness. And so something that I'm actively learning is how to let my voice get happy and, and joyful and juicy and let myself feel the emotions that I need to feel um, and let it like fill the room. To not feel as if for me to be happy means that I'm taking away from somebody else or um, that is me, like I said before, rubbing something in someone's face that... I, it is safe for me to be happy and joyful in all experiences. And if someone else has a negative experience, it's more in them because what, what I've learned over and over and what I'm trying to sink, let sink in is that my happiness is not offensive to someone, is not a burden to someone. If anything, the people that love me, they get so happy seeing me happy. So the more that I am happy, the happier it makes the people around me. And so I'm going to be talking about this relationship with as much access to my happiness that I can right now. For some people, it may be like, oh, girl, you can be happier than that. <laughs> um, but I, I am not going to minimize the goodness that has happened to me because someone else doesn't have the container for it. And I hope that in me sharing this, it gives you access to fill the full happiness of the blessings that you have as well without feeling like you have to um, kind of give yourself a little bit of a crumb at a time to kind of stretch it out, you know, because you don't know when the happiness is going to end. I, I want you to feel your happiness fully all the time. So I'm going to talk about that and then I'm going to talk about the lessons I've learned Um while being in this really happy place. So um, I met my partner on um, an app that I'm not going to share just because I want them to sponsor me. <laughs> um, it is not a free app, I'll tell you all that. So, But it's one of the ones that I want to sponsor this podcast. So I'm waiting to see if that happens. Um, but it it was one of the paid ones. And... Before I was with my partner that I'm with now, I was in a relationship where I was very much taken for granted, uh, very much not seen, very much felt like I was tolerated. Uh, I even felt like at some points my partner was uh, jealous or intimidated by me, by the things that he would say, um, by the things that he would challenge, by how in every other part of the world that I was in, I was esteemed. I was loved, um, beloved even, um, that people have really great things to say about me, but my partner was not as impressed. Or, you know, I would be the one putting in a lot of work romantic, romantically into the relationship and the partner would, they would, again, be physically present, but not active in it. So it was a whole lot of emotional and mental labor um, that just ended up depleting me and draining me and really making me feel less than. And so through a lot of personal work and everything, that is what helped me fit, realize what was happening, that I mistakenly got into a relationship that mimicked a lot of what I saw generationally, um, a lot of women who were in relationships based on obligation in relationships with partners who did not romance them, who did not love them, that it was just part of their duty to be there. 
that it was assumed that because relationships are hard, quote unquote, that you would go through not even just dry deserts of time, but that you would just need to take the crumbs that were there and be happy because relationships can't always be happiness and rainbows all the time. Um, not realizing that you were, you you being me, but you also being the, the women that I watched before me, but not realizing that you are, you are or were in relationships with people who were neglecting you and, and discarding you, even if they were physically present in the same ways that caregivers and others had done before. And that you were constantly re-traumatizing yourself and constantly trying to be heard and be listened to. And just, it was never, never landing, you know, no matter what you did. And so through a lot of personal work, the things that I've talked about here on the podcast um, and a lot of unlearning, I realized, oh, I did all this stuff to get to this point, but this is also trauma. And this is where I committed to trauma and I don't have to commit to trauma. Just because this wasn't on my radar uh, when I got into it does not mean that I am now stuck to stay here. Um, I get to choose. I get to break this generational curse. I get to move into something different. And for damn sure, if I'm going to be depleted and be sad, then I can do that better by myself than to be dragging along someone else who's just committed to not loving me um, and just going along for the ride. And so that's what I did. And so exiting that relationship was great, but then I had to do the work to figure out, okay, what got me here? Um, One, I had to rebuild myself. Um, because again, I was in a relationship who did not see the value that I was, did not see the prize that they had in front of them. And so I had to rebuild it. And I'm also going into, even though the story, this podcast is going to be focusing on being present and grounded. I know that there are so many women who have this exact same story. Either you're currently in it or you have already left it and you're currently rebuilding yourself or you've already gone through this and you're like, yeah, girl, I can relate. And so I am going through these different steps because I want you to hear that this is possible for you. So um, after I left that relationship, I had to rebuild the pieces of my self-esteem that I didn't realize were being eaten away at by being in a relationship with someone that doesn't see you and love you and honor you. That it is, it, it is warfare, it's emotional warfare that it's, it seeps into places and corners of you that you thought because you're so high functioning, again, you being me, you think that just because you can still keep the house together, still go to work, if you have kids, you can still parent the kids, that it's not really affecting you that much. You think because you can see what he, she, or they are saying or doing to you that's untrue, you think that that's enough of protection from how that will emotionally affect you, but it's not. Um, you literally have to unlearn all the heaviness and all the shame and all the drama that they try to put on you, that they projected onto you from their own low self-esteem and all of that. And then you have to also realize, okay, what was it about that that made me think I was worthy of it? What was it that made me feel like I deserved that? Or that that was good enough, that that was the best that I could get. And there's a lot of things that come uncovered with that. And so I have been doing that work for a long time um, or for a while um, and dating along the way. And every time I dated someone, you know, my experience has been every time I would date someone, it would get better. Each person would come become closer and closer to what I wanted, but there would still be some some clickers or some, some issues and there would be like trends. And then that would be an area that I got to look at and say, okay, why does this keep coming up? And what does this mean? And, and try to do the work on my end that made me a reciprocal, a match for what was showing up in front of me. I tried to make sure that I stayed away from different images that fed into men suck and 
there are no good men out there because that did not help me feel better. Uh, there was a point in time when I loved to watch the the bad date uh, TikToks <laughs> because the stories were so hilarious. And it also made me feel like, oh, OK, uh, I am this wonderful woman. I am beautiful. I am loving. I'm kind. I'm self-aware. And this other woman who looks like she is beautiful, that she's self-aware, that she's kind, that she's funny, is going on a bad date. Great. It's not just me. But then I had to start to unfollow those things, too, because I did not want to surround myself with images of bad dates. I did not want that to be my reality. And so I would start to follow more and more people who were happy and all the people who I had unfollowed before because they triggered me <laughs> because they were in happy relationships. Little by little, I let myself um, follow them again. And, you know, I would always like and heart on stories of women of all ages and of all backgrounds and of all sizes finding love. Um, and finding love no matter how many kids they had and finding love, no, again, no matter what their body shape was or how old they were. And those were the stories that I paid attention to. Those were the stories that I used as my North Star. So whenever there would be some kind of viral podcast clip about, you know, how hard it was and how women can't find love or some fool talking about if he being high value and not and not thinking women who were single mothers were high value and having all these people fight in the comments, I I chose to disconnect from that because that did not help me. And, you know, me being a single mother um, in my late 30s with a child, um, there was so much information out there that could tell me, well, you know, Sheena, you have all these markers against you. And, you know, whatever, whatever. And I was like, no, that's not going to be my reality. So that's what I use to keep myself mentally sane. I talked about it in therapy, of course. I talked about, you know, the pain of waiting. You know, that is that is a real thing that I try to always make space for is, you know, even when you're doing all the right things, it doesn't mean that Amazon's going to deliver your perfect person to you on your doorstep. Uh, and that is frustrating because sometimes it's like, why not? <laughs> I can get, I can get everything else. Uh, and it, it's, it's sometimes it's not even about not having faith. It is the waiting part. So one of the things I've been doing lately to improve my health is increasing my hydration and liquid IV has been one of the main tools that have helped me do so. Liquid IV is the category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being and their hydration multiplier is the one product you don't want to miss in your daily routine. Their flavor packets are delicious. They are super convenient and come in great flavors like tropical punch, strawberry, and pina colada. If you're one of my loves who has a hard time letting go of unhealthy flavored drinks, this is absolutely the one for you to try. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins, B5, B3, B6, B12, and vitamin C. And it's two times faster than hydration with water alone. Use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, when you feel run down, after a long night out, and on long flights. Grab your Liquid IV and bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off if you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BGH at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code BGH at liquidiv.com. Shopping these days can be underwhelming, but at QVC, we believe those who love to shop deserve a living, breathing way to shop, where product descriptions are alive with demos by creators, chats with inventors, and hosts who know the most. From self-care and kitchenware to fashion trends and forever faves, at QVC, we bring life to products and products to life. Shop qvc.com slash podcast and use code QVC15podcast for $15 off $30 for new customers. This is shopping brought to life. We hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Let's take a quick break to say thanks to this week's sponsors. So anyways, uh, doing all that along the way of doing all that work, I ended up meeting my partner. And so for those of you who've done the recovery school, my alumni um, are from Addicted and Avoidant to Available. 
he fits every single thing on my list. The list I tell y'all to make, he check, 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 check. Um, the only thing that he doesn't quite fit is that he does not speak TikTok like I speak TikTok. <laughs> he is not a TikTok fiend, um, but that's okay. He is so hardworking and he is honest. Uh, what made me really de- decide to give him a chance because our first date was horrible. And so um, I'll tell y'all that story. Um, we went out on our first date. We went to um, to one of the steakhouses here. And so, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking good. I'm looking like a snack, right? You know, so I'm like ready to like have a good time. I'm ready to, you know, have some good conversation because we had so much in common. We were both, um, we're both sci-fi and uh, fantasy nerds. Uh, we both love our audio books. Uh, we had a lot of the same values and things coming into this. We um, we had done a lot of the same things before. And, you know, I was really excited to have this conversation. And he seemed like he was really smart. I love nerds. Like, I love someone who, and I think I've said this before in the previous episode, but I love someone that I can randomly mention something and they tell me how it was made, you know, during the Chinese dynasty in, you know, 2000 BC. Like, give it to me. Like, I love that. So I'm so excited. And we go on the date and he talks the whole time to the point where they, they were like, no, like, breaks. And so I was like, well, this isn't going to happen again. <laughs> and so I... I went to the bathroom. I got away to the bathroom and, you know, I'm texting my friends and this black woman comes into the bathroom and she's like, oh, like she compliments me. She's like, oh, you look really nice. And I was like, yeah. She's like, are you here on a date? And I was like, yeah. And uh, she's like, how is it going? And I gave her a look and she was like, Uh, and she asked me questions and I told her about him talking all the time. And, you know, she asked me what he did and I told her, she's like, oh girl, well that's, that's why, you know, these, these tech guys, you know? And so she was like, here's what you need to do. You need to, I, she said, I suggest that you give him another chance. And she talked about her relationships and her late husband who had passed away, who I guess they had had a similar experience starting up. And she was like, you know, what really matters is if this man actually likes you and cares about you and wants to take care of you. You know, he may be nervous. He may be whatever, whatever, but give him, give him another chance. And so I was like, I don't know about all that, but okay. So I go back out and he's like, I think I've been dominating the conversation. And I was like, yes, yes, you have. So he tries his best to make some space, but he, you know, he started talking again. And so, um, you know, we go home and we go to our respective homes. <laughs> and so he texts me and he's like, so I had a really good time last night. I had a really good time tonight. And I was like, thank you. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> and then, and then he, <laughs> he was like, um, yeah, and I would I would like to do it again. And I was like, okay, well, if you like to do it again, can I be honest with you? And he's like, yeah, that that's important for all relationships. And so I told him, I was like, you know, I felt really crowded out uh, during this, during tonight. And I felt like you weren't listening. And I felt like you were just waiting. If I, if I did say something, you were waiting for your turn to talk. And if I went out with you again, that couldn't happen. It needs to be more relaxed. And he was like, um, you know, thank you. I really appreciate you telling me that. And I'm really sorry. You know, I was just really nervous tonight. Um, And so that's what the lady in the bathroom said. That's what my girlfriend said. And he's like, you know, if you if you give me another chance, I can I'll promise I'll I'll try. And y'all since that night. This man has <laughs> um, this man has gone over and beyond to to be everything that I need um, from 
being a better listener to being present for me and being a hero before I even asked for it from making me laugh to to speaking to the adventure inside of me and and giving me new experiences um and really lighting up at the aspect of doing that um he has already had his children who are um younger adults now and he gets so excited at the idea of of having Aiden in his life forever um my son loves him um he he is such an amazing father on his own end um in the ways that he tries to attend to Aiden plan different things for him to do figuring in you know different activities and stuff for us to do together as like a little family group and beyond is just amazing his love languages he speaks my love languages which are gifts and words of affirmation so every day I hear not only that I'm beautiful but how much he loves me um the the gifts are so thoughtful and he'll gift before me even asking um one of my gifts one of the earlier gifts was y'all know I'm a Harry Potter nerd um y'all know about my Harry Potter camp I'm also a gamer uh which I realized I needed to start claiming that and so I was so excited for Hogwarts Legacy to come out and I've been following it this whole time before it was released and I had an Xbox and I can't remember it was just like the plain Xbox or Xbox one I don't know but I had whatever version that made it to where when the video came out everybody else would get it months before I got it and so I was just you know telling him about it and so I see a little glint in his eyes and he also can't keep a secret so that's that's one of his tells So he gets all like excited. You can like see him vibrating in his chair. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to (laughs) get, I guess I'm going to get the game or maybe he's going to give me one of the systems. I don't know, but whatever. So he ends up getting me a PS5 uh, with the game and all the bells and whistles. You know, when I go places, I don't even bring my wallet. So sometimes I worry, you know, I hope we don't get in an accident because I ain't got my ID on me because all I, all I got is lip gloss. Like I'm just here. (laughs) I'm here for the ride, but the thing about him is he he takes care of everyone. He takes care of his kids. He takes care of his family. He takes care of his employees at his job. He prides himself in being a fair, giving, generous boss that builds a happy workplace. He is such a hard worker, and he I just know I just know that when I'm with him. I'll be taken care of and I'll be protected. And his integrity and his word is so important to him. And with as amazing as he is, he will tell me over and over again that he can't believe how lucky he is to be with me. Um, That he feels like he has won and that I'm his prize. And that he will do anything for me and that everything that he has given to me and wants to give to me is so worth it. I've never had to once wonder where I stand with him from day one. He has always made it very intentional who he is, what he was looking for, what he felt about me, that he felt something very clearly with me and wanted to be in a committed partnership with me. Um, and wanted to be exclusive. I was the one who was holding off because trauma and because it was like, this is, this is very good and it's very early. Um, but he was very clear and he was like, this is what I want and I'm here and I'm ready when you are. And, and so he was so happy and, um, like he, he openly shares his emotions with me. Uh, talking, speaking of Harry Potter, he's a Slytherin. 
And so <laughs> even with him being a uh, team green, you know, he is emotionally expressive um, and vulnerable with me um, and honest with me. And so once we were official and even a little bit of before low key, you know, I would he was so excited to introduce me to to his friends, to his coworkers at his job, to his family, you know, and to introduce me as his partner, as his girlfriend. And um and very clear about wanting more, um, more than that with me. Um, not only to me, but also to other people as well. And so it has been this has been kind of like a twilight zone kind of thing um, because it feels real, but also it's letting myself settle into it and let this be my reality. So let me go ahead and just go into the lessons that I've had to learn by being in this type of relationship um, with this type of person, this type of really amazing man. Um, So the first thing is that everything here going forward, for the most part, maybe 80, 90 percent, maybe I'll change that percentage one day. But most of it is grounding work. Yes, I can still when it comes to personal development and being a good partner. Yes, I can learn about, you know, communication skills or yes, I can learn more about, you know, different cultural differences because he's a different um, background than than me. Maybe there's some a lot of other things that I can learn, but really what helps me and what helps this partnership thrive is when I am connected to my body, when I'm connected to me learning how to, to self-soothe when I'm triggered, with me learning how to communicate to him after I have self-soothed and taken, taken care of myself me learning how to also tap into pleasure and happiness in my body because the more happy I am and the more access to pleasure that I have, the more we can have it in our relationship because if I am stuck with being sad and being mopey and being down, you know, that brings down the energy in the relationship and not that my partner doesn't have space for it, but that is my personal work. You know, am I taking care of myself or am I expecting someone else to do the heavy lifting for me, you know, um, when it may or may not have anything to do with him. And I've talked about this a little bit in previous podcast episodes, um, especially the more recent ones. So this may sound a little bit familiar, but the healthier I am with being in touch with my body, the better things are, which leads to The second thing that I've learned and that I'm learning, which is the importance of intentionally, aggressively even in some ways, not only reparenting myself, but also changing my negative thoughts and beliefs instead of waiting for them to magically change. So for example, the other day, there was something that I wanted to share with him that I needed, and I can't remember what it was about, but whatever it was, I was really afraid that he would get upset with me and upset with me with either being offended that I was asking for something or that, um, you know, whatever he was doing wasn't enough or that I was just expecting some pushback and some blowback before being heard. And I'm like rehearsing like what could happen. I'm rehearsing what he may say and what I'm going to say instead and um, and how would I deal with it and kind of just preparing for it. You know, in my head, I'm like, yeah, something good could happen, but really I'm going to prepare just in case. I'm going to prepare for this fight. So if it does happen, I'm ready. And I realized while I was doing that is I am, I'm not doing this just in case. I'm doing this because this is what I believe is going to happen. And I'm like living in this distress and I'm living in this fear leading up to this conversation with this man when really that's not helping me feel happy and feel content. And it's actually just feeding my stress. It's feeding this belief that this relationship is just going to be hard and and a fight and war. 
It's feeding this belief that I can't trust my partner to listen to me when everything in the past has shown that he does and that he does care. Um, even if it's something he disagrees with, that he is like actively, like I can look around and list all these things that he's actively doing to make me feel more comfortable on compromises that he's made and ways that he's growing as a man and doing his own personal work in different areas that weren't even on his radar that he took full responsibility for that I'm, I don't tell him what to do and he fully does it on his own to make me happy. Um, so the facts are not matching what I'm over here preparing for. And so I, I, I caught that and I was like, okay, this is a me thing. And instead of me preparing myself for, for fear and backlash, what is it that I want? What is it that I need? And I was like, I want to be loved and listened to. And so what I started to do is I started to repeat to myself, I will be loved and listened to. 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 And, you know, I can even feel myself right now while I'm telling you all this, like nothing is going on, but I can feel my, my body relaxing. And that's what happened then. I started to unclench. I started to be able to breathe a little bit deeper. I started to, all the stress and anxiety that was like on my shoulders and on my back, it's like the air, it's like the clouds started to part. And I started to like speak life into, into the world, into the universe. I'm starting to speak what was going to happen. And then I went on with the rest of my day. Um, and then if it came back to mind again, I started to say again, I will be loved and listened to. I'll be loved and listened to. I'll be loved and listened to. And because I've done the work that I've talked about on this podcast, like all the stuff that I was able to clear things out, I actually believed it. If me... A year ago, the woman I was a year ago or even two years ago tried to do what I did recently with I Will Be Loved and Listened To, it would have just hit hit my chest and fell off. It wouldn't have gone in because there was a whole lot of clearing out. There was a whole lot of trauma and self-belief and underlying work I had to do to get here. And I think a lot of times, you know, I recently learned about the phrase spiritual bypassing um, a few months ago. And my understanding of the word is that a lot of times people will try to skip to different levels from where they are because they hear somebody talking about what it is to like be positive and to be to be mindful and to to live in an abundant lifestyle. But there's all these really negative core beliefs and all these woundings and all these things that you're not even dealing with because you think if you just claim it, it's going to come. But really you're trying to skip steps and you're trying to skip levels. And so when the thing doesn't come or when it does come and you don't know how to deal with it because it's overwhelming and it's different than anything that you've ever experienced before, you falter. And it's because you're trying to bypass the work that you need to get here. And so the work that I did to get here set it up to where I could say, I will be loved and listened to. I will be loved and listened to. I will be loved and listened to. And it actually settled into my heart so that I didn't, um, it didn't, wasn't like I would be loved and listened to, but then there was still a part of me that was bracing and scared for, but what if I'm not? And what, what if, what if he gets mad at me? And why is it always so hard? Like, why am I not always listened to? And then I didn't go down a whole path of like the times that a parent didn't listen to me or that I was bullied or something else. Like I was able to just be present in that moment. And so um, all that to say, when I talked to my partner, I was loved and listened to. And so was I loved and listened to only because that's who my partner is? Was I loved and listened to because I allow myself to actually receive it? Like, am I always loved and listened to? But because I'm so, I have been so stuck in a perspective that anticipated a fight or anticipated someone judging me for what I needed and judge me for what I wanted and not and me having to convince them that what I felt and what I needed was important. Um, was it always, was I always loved to listen to, but I felt like I wasn't because that's the lens I was looking through, you know? Um, and so I wasn't kind of making it harder than it needed to be. Who knows? Maybe a little bit of everything, but it's what happened. And... I, and it was easy. 
And it was like, yeah, of course, of course, baby, whatever you need. Like, that's not even a big deal. Whatever you need from me, I got you. And I was like, oh, okay. Because in my head, this was going to be a whole hour conversation, but it was only two or three minutes. And so I find that I'm actively on the hunt a lot for all the ways that I will anticipate pain, that I will anticipate being let down, that I will anticipate having to fight for myself, that I will anticipate not feeling safe versus learning how to train myself and talk to myself and rewire all those beliefs that I am in a safe place. And I'm in a safe place because I've chosen a safe partner. And it's not because I'm putting all of my faith into them being perfect. Oh, here comes the lawnmowers. Sorry, y'all. I did my best. (laughs) Um, And them being perfect, but in me realizing that I'm no longer in a war zone and I've picked healthy friends, family, and loved ones around me that I can trust to be present and be there and listen and attune to me. A few other things that I think have really set me up for this relationship with someone who was so generous you know, I kept I kept meeting people who were, you know, they may have had everything on paper. They may have been really crazy about me and really wanted to take care of me, you know, excited to introduce me to other people, you know, all, all of that stuff. But when it came to their ability to be generous, either they couldn't because of where they were currently in life or they had a very... Um, meager mindset, or they were um, very focused. They had other responsibilities that they had to take care of. Like there was always something that stopped them from being generous with time, with money, with gifts, like with whatever. And so with, with compliments too, you know, like I could tell that they really, really cared for me and really, really adored me, but their ability to just verbally express that they couldn't, they couldn't do it. And um, so again, I had to look at, okay, I'm the common denominator. What is this about? How am I reciprocal for that? And then I said, okay, am I able to receive? Like, that's why I've been talking to y'all so much about receiving over the last year or so, because I really feel like that's so much of a missing piece. Like we're, we're doing all this healing. We're doing all this, um, self-love and self-development work, and hopes that we get a relationship or get experiences that give us all these things that we want. But do we know how to actually take the compliments? Do we actually know how to let people help us? Do we actually know how to let people gift things to us? Do we actually know how to let people love us without feeling like we have to pay them back, without feeling like we're taking from them, without feeling like they're secretly resentful of having to give to us because we have been secretly resentful for the ways that people have drained us and we're totally projecting our stuff on the other people. Do we actually know how to let our, allow ourselves to be loved and taken care of? Meanwhile, we're so upset that no one is loving us and taking care of ourselves and taking care of us and volunteering and being open to it. So me learning how to receive I mean, practicing how to do that and even building a vocabulary around that and building awareness around that because it's such a abstract term. Like it's so like, what does that mean? Like get my hand is open, like give me whatever. Like I'm not going to turn it down, but it really is like, do you brace when you think about people helping you? Do you brace when you think about people giving you a compliment just because? Is there a part of you that wants to be equal and be fair and pay someone back for their kindness. And you think, well, that's just me being a a courteous person. That's just me having good home training. That's how I was raised. And I want you to think about that. You were raised that kindness to you wasn't free, that you have to match that energy because otherwise you owe them or because they're going to have something hanging over you or because The way that you show gratitude to someone is you give something back because they weren't actually giving it to you out the goodness of their heart. They were giving it to you so that they could get praise from you or get a favor back from you. And so you've never had that type of free love before. I mean, it just goes to so many different directions and so many different trauma stories. 
But me learning how to receive has been so important because um, I've had to stop myself from telling him to not give because one, giving makes him happy, first of all. And two, it's me learning that even though this is awkward, this is how it should have always been. And so I'm the one who needs to learn how to get with the program, not him learning how to stop because it makes me uncomfortable. You know, it's really weird when you've spent your whole life taking care of other people and constantly having to think about, okay, what's the next step? What's the next thing we need to do? Um, Troubleshooting for when someone's going to drop the ball, whether or not it's a family member, whether or not it's a partner, whether or not it's a child, um, and just expecting that. And so it is so different being in a relationship with someone that you trust to be a functioning human being and is going to stand by their word and also someone who is taking care of you. When you're used to being the caretaker, having someone take care of you, at, at first it feels so jarring and foreign. You know, I found myself very often in our relationship, especially at the beginning, having to, like constantly saying, I feel like I feel so bad. I feel like you're doing so much. And I feel like, um, you know, just basically in a way asking like, what can I do? Are you sure you don't need anything? He was like, Sheena, what you give me just from you being you is more than enough. Like you, you, who you are is enough. You give me so much. And, you know, if I'm going to translate it into the language that we hear in all these other corners, you know, my my feminine energy, I know that that's a trigger for a lot of people, but like my energy, my love, my presence, it really is soothing and helpful for him. He'll tell me, you know, you make me feel so safe. You make me feel so loved. I feel so, so, so taken care of by you. And I'm like, yo, I'm just here. Like, like <laughs> I'm just here being me. And wow, like, wow, to not have to earn or prove or show and argue and show what you've been doing to, to, to prove that you're just as invested in the relationship. Like if anything, sometimes if we do have a disagreement, I know not to bring that up. Like I know not to bring in tit for tat stuff here because that's not how this relationship operates um, with like the tally marks and stuff. And so it's like, it's different, y'all. It's different. And so receiving helped me be in a relationship where I felt like I didn't feel like I need to pay him back because I know, I know the day that he gets me something really nice or, you know, helps me with like some kind of financial thing that I need. And I do everything in my power to try to pay him back and give him a bigger gift is a day that he's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I don't need that. There was even, there was like, he really loves Diet Coke. And, and I wanted to buy him like this sweatshirt that I saw that had Diet Coke on it. And he was like, Sheena, don't you buy me that. Like, I do not want you to buy me anything. I just want you, I just want you to take care of yourself. And I got it. I don't need that. And so I'm like, okay, you know, his love language is not gifts. Also, he gives in gifts, but he receives in quality time. And he receives in um, physical touch. So that's what I stick to. And I trust that it's enough. So like I said, you know, one of the biggest lessons that I have right now, which I think for some is not going to make sense. But for some of you who are there, you get it, is letting myself be happy. Letting myself talk about these things like, Talk about the great things that are happening with other people more often. That when I talk about it, like I said, to let my voice get big and bright and let myself smile when I'm saying it. For me to fully let go and be present and be in my body and not feel like I have to always be on high alert for if something changes. Or what if I say this and then, you know, he cheats on me or, you know, we break up or you know, all all the stuff that comes into your head whenever you're really happy and then the what ifs come up like, yeah, those are what ifs. But what if this is one of the best loving relationships in my life? 
what if this is the beginning of more that's coming down the road because I've been opening my heart more? What if this is how relationships should always be? You know, what, you know, what, what if, what if that is also what's coming down the pipeline as well? And I think in all the ways I've learned how to give disclaimers in my life, a lot of the disclaimers have not only been for therapeutic reasons, but it's to make other people more comfortable. And it's also been to hedge myself off and protect myself from disappointment. But in me protecting myself from disappointment, I've never allowed myself to fully embrace everything that's in front of me. So that's where I currently am right now, learning how to be grounded in the moment, in my body, learning to let myself be happy, learning how to let myself receive, learning how to let this be my new normal, learning how to let myself know that what I am and who I am is enough, is more than enough, that is healing in its own right, that is loving in its own right, that that's all I've ever had to do is just to show up. And I have a relationship that that's literally all I need to do is show up. <laughs> um, and there's no contingencies. There's no, um, if you don't do this, then I'm not here. Like, y'all y'all know your girl don't cook. Like, I just, like, I am, I am just here, y'all. I'm just here loving on this man, loving on my child, loving on y'all here, taking care of my health. He He takes care of me, my health. Like, it's just, I feel very very happy and I feel very blessed and um and I know that this is available for for others as well and I hope I hope that at all the different places that you have access to love in your friendships and your family relationships if any of you are also in relationships with healthy people who love you and who wants to give to you, that you're allowing that person to give to you in whatever way they give, whether or not they give in words of affirmation, whether or not they give in quality time, whether or not they give in fixing things up for you, whether or not they give in trying to hug, hug you and love you, that you allow them to give to you and that you're able to receive that. Um, and that you're also practicing being present in your body and knowing that your relationship with yourself is the most important. And that's the one that's going to guide your relationships in all other corners of your life as well. So that's it for today's episode. I'm going to pause it here because I feel like the long folks are about five, six away from coming and blasting again. And um, this episode is already pushing an hour. So um, I hope that by sharing where the goodness is right now for me has been helpful in the lessons that I'm pulling from it and staying grounded and learning how to receive and staying open and letting this be my new normal and letting myself be fully, fully seen and happy. Um, I wonder how many other people listening have that as a defense mechanism as well. Not letting yourself be fully happy and open, not only in front of other people, but even within yourself Um, and trying to like ration out the happiness uh, and making sure that it doesn't get too too overwhelming, too uncontrollable because of fear of what may happen if you do. Um, Just letting you know that it's okay. It's okay for you to be fully, fully connected to all of that joy. So, all right, that's it for today, y'all. I'm sending you all so much love. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And as always, I hope that you take care of yourselves. Hey, so thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoy what you've learned, it doesn't have to stop here. You can check out the Black Girls Heal website at blackgirlsheal.org and grab the worksheet for this week's episode or any of your other favorite episodes from our shop, which has an overview of the main points, healing circle discussion questions and journal prompts, and challenges to take with, take with you into the week. You can check out the blackgirlsheal.org website and grab the worksheet for this week's episode or any of your other favorite episodes from our shop with an overview of the main points, healing circle discussion questions and journal prompts, and challenges that you can take with you into the week. Also, you can check out any of our other self-study and coaching programs, resources, and freebies to help you heal from the intimacy disorders of love addiction, love avoidance, love deprivation, and the trauma that causes it. The best time to start or restart your healing journey is now. We hope you enjoy all of these resources. And until next time, remember you are so loved 
and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves.